it and it rams down your enemies. Aatrox will be the lock into it. And we'll see what Schalke decide to pick for their second selection. Yeah, surprise, surprise. It's kind of been the bread and butter pick for Odoamne up there. Two great success on this Aatrox. His ability to play, pilot this champion has been very impressive. You then take away the misfortune. I think it's too many power tools to give away a potential Orm, Jarvan, MF type of combo to excel. It's the only champion he's played more than once this split. He's got six games now. That is the most the Aatrox. English thing you've done. You can't see it, but Medic is actually making himself tea right now. It's hot water and honey. Okay? You've got to look after your throat draft. rescue. It's very important. Uh, there's Zaya Rakan locked in for the bottom lane of XL. Patrick and Torre, the two new players on this team this split. They've been having pretty good performances down there. They seem to have relatively good synergy. More than uh, pretty good uh, performances. I actually think that uh, Patrick and Torre are the standout members of this roster. I know that we just heard a ton of praise about Expect. We're constantly talking about how good in the jungle Cadrill is. But for me, Patrick and Torre have been where it's been out for Excel. I think that this was the biggest change they made over the offseason in bringing in new bottom lane. And it's brought the most promise to this roster, especially on a power lover combo like yeah. Zaya and Rakan. Uh, Torres Recon in particular, pretty nasty. We'll see how effective he can be in the team fights as the game goes on. And in the lane, of course, Zaya Recon, some of the best duelists we have in the bottom lane. LeBlanc and Azir have been banned out in this second phase after the Braum was locked in alongside the MF. And we'll see exactly if we continue to get mid lane bans, because there are still some powerful junglers available, and the Olaf is one of them. Schalke will remove that from the pool. I just think it's really difficult. Um, both Abadaga and Mickey have shown pretty large and sometimes unique mid lane uh, champion pools. Mickey, I think, is one of the mid laners that feels the most comfortable with also reaching towards uh, more AD oriented uh, mid laners, which is why I think Cadrill's had so much success going towards an AD jungler like the Gragas, not just because of Gragas's initial built in strength. I do doubt that we'll see the Vayne mid once again <laughs> from Mickey. Didn't work out too well for him yesterday. Sejuani is the lot for Lorox. He'll be taking the ball into the jungle. And uh, Karthus, that you mentioned, the AP threat in that mid lane, of course, uh, in that jungle, sorry. Of course, Orn can be flexed into the mid lane as well. So we could have already seen Mickey's pick here. Although he doesn't seem like an Orn player to me. And there's the Karthus. We've talked uh, about Karthus a lot on this broadcast. I'm sure we'll mention him again as soon as we get into the game. It used to be, however, that when you had to pick like a Karthus, you need to make sure that you had pushing priority into your lanes or at least some way to protect yourself from getting invaded on. Um, I think it's a pretty safe pickup, especially as soon as you see the Sejuani uh, here. So I really like the composition that Excel have put together. I think it's really balanced, has great late game scaling potential, and they don't just hard lose lanes. They should actually neutralize a lot of these lanes and not get bullied around in the early portions of the game. Well, we'll see if Schalke have anything special to bring out against the Orn in the mid lane. It's going to be Victor. Uh, Abadage has played that once already this split. Uh, it was yesterday in their game versus Vitality, and they won that one, so maybe it will work out for them. He's very good at controlling team fights with the Victor. Has great zone control. And uh, as the XL fans start to uproariously chant for their team and then quiet down as soon as I start talking about them chanting. Now talk to me about what the Schalke composition wants to do. Um, I do want to focus in on Abadage on the Victor. We heard yesterday that Victor is kind of one of his signature champions. We just talked about the comfort that he can display on that champion. It's really hard with them. <laughs> yeah, well, it, like, I quite enjoy it. I'm a big <laughs> football fan, big rugby fan, and chanting is just part of... Uh, the atmosphere that you developed there. I remember when we were in Athens, listening to the crowd just cheer along was uh, incredible. And uh, both these teams will be hoping they can make it to Budapest at the end of the split, but both of them have a long way to go. XL sitting at four and five, Schalke sitting at two and seven. Back to Schalke's composition, however. Um, so you have Abadage onto the victor. You have the Sejuani there. We've kind of seen the, the tail signs of um, how well these teams or these champions can synergize together into team fights. In terms of pre-team fight phase, there's so many options for Sejuani to attack either way. We've seen a lot of value when you attack Karthus in the jungle. You get in his face, you try to disrupt him. We saw Xerse be very effective on the Nidalee pick into Karthus um, just yesterday. And so our eyes will be on Sejuani. Can she give Kadril a hard time there, either by unlocking one of her laners, walking into his jungle, or is Kadril just going to get to speed run, jungle done quick, through to level six and start impacting the map? Eyes on the junglers early on. Eyes on Schalkers. They have a three-man group down towards the bottom side. 
You can see Inax, Odo, and Dreams all here, but Lowox is on the top side, maybe expecting Torre to go for a jump across the wall. Yeah, he does also have a Sweeper right now on the Recon. Usually pretty indicative that uh, a delayed invade could potentially come out. Is he going to do it? Dreams is there. Odo Omne has started to go back towards top. He hasn't scaled an ability yet, Torre. Um, obviously, you think that he would be going for the invade if he scaled his hop. I'm watching him, don't worry. We're all watching him. There we go. <laughs> About to hop over the wall. And now, Lorox will come down and join his team. There are no wards here for Schalke. Actually, Lorox deciding to start at red buff means that this could be a very powerful invade for XL. Said how much that Sejuani wants to set the Karthus behind in the jungle, but this could be great. Yeah, so here comes the delayed invade. We talked about the sweeper. Uh, Torre is now using it. He's going to catch this ward. They're clearing it out. And if Kadril is super successful here, he's going to pick up this blue buff and then be able to uh, not just play a split map, but kind of race back over to his blue buff and potentially get a three buff here on Lorox. Um, if Lorox can very quickly do his red, maybe hop the ward, you can see already that Kadril has placed, excuse me, not Kadril, Expect has placed Vision in the river here to catch if Sejuani is going to go across and try to contest the blue. Let's have a look. Lorox, able to dodge away from some of it. There he goes, pinged out straight away. Is Expect going to come down and try and fight over this one? Doesn't look like it. XL will just use the knowledge that they have. Trading coming in is exhaust straight away from Dreams. One more auto. We'll get the stun onto Patrick with the Guardian proc. will keep him a little bit healthier than he could have been. And that's okay for the XL bottom lane. A summoner burnt by Dreams. So uh, it isn't going to be a three buff. It is instead going to just be a split map scenario here. So Cage will return to his jungle, probably power farm, um, reset, and then continue to farm. The nice thing is, is we talked about the uh, the pushing power, the fact that not only do Excel just have champions that scale exceptionally well into the late game, they also have champions that can dominate lane phase, like Azaya and Rakan when you get this duo. Um, they're one of the few champions in the game that just, that 2v2, you can't outpush it. No matter what you do, you will never beat its yeah. push. The split push does mean that Expect has to play just that little bit safer in the top lane, though. He knows his jungle is not going to be up here soon and Lorox will be spending a lot of time on that top half of the map. Well, we can talk about some gangplank mechanics. I'll hold it though as Torre goes in. That's going to be okay. It's just a little bit of a trade as Patrick takes a bit of damage back. Concussive Blows will proc in the end. And uh, the Zaya Rakan, just doing Zaya Rakan things. There's a uh, Rakan here. You just want to jump in, see if you can get a trade off into a Braum. It's a little bit tricky because he puts up the Unbreakable and then your Zaya's damage is mitigated quite a lot. So we're going to peek up over on Expect here. You talked rightfully so that in a split map, when he's playing weak side, his jungler will not be uh, spending a lot of time on the top side of the map, which makes it weak for him, um, that he needs to be careful. So talking about Gangplank mechanics, and if you yourself don't play Gangplank, uh, it's a champion that we see a lot, but you don't really get to go super in-depth with him. I'm trying to buy some time because it looks like Sejuani's going to visit him, so I'll hold the point for a second. Expect has the flash. Doesn't have a huge amount of mana. Corrupting Potion just ran out. Here we go. Steps forward towards a barrel. Odawamne looking for the knockup. Expect trying to dodge around. TP already used. Expect's going to be dead before that TP even comes out. He manages to survive with the remove scurvy and Kadal is here. Mickey won't land the knockup as Lorox was just to the side of it. Mickey decided to go into his pillow instead of into the wall. And because of that, I think Lorox is going to get out of this one. Just dodges the final lay waste. Really well done there. Um, Odawamne stopping Kadal in his trap making sure that that final Skittle couldn't find Sejuani there, so she managed to get out. But two crucial mistakes coming out of Excel. Um, a, expect uh, opening himself up to a gank like that. Usually with Gangplank, you actually place the barrel behind you onto your minions when you have to play weak side, because um, you can get the movement speed from the barrel and you can use it as a disengage option. Expect has actually been using his barrels really aggressively to contest the push, which opens him up to a situation like that. Then the second mistake is Mickey's teleport comes in. He doesn't find the CC against the wall, and it means that Shalka are completely unpunished for a very successful gank top. Bit of a decision making error there for Mickey, you have to feel afterwards. Expect teleports into the mid lane to catch the wave so they don't lose out too much in terms of CS. But of course, that first kill will mean that Shalka have about a 400 gold lead. Expect has got a cull, he'll be trying to stack that one up as quickly as possible to get towards that late game gangplank. Now, Lorax is here. Has the smite, we'll be looking for the steal. Kadal doesn't have a smite, so Lorox, if he could have got close enough, and if that scuffle crab had been low enough, he could have stolen it away. Oh no, the Red crab! Team is here. I believe the death rate got that. I'll have a look as Dreams flashes forward. They're looking for Mickey. Mickey's gonna flash himself, and should be able to escape the format. Oh, Lorox. Yep, stuck on the pillar. 
It's uh, between a rock and a hard place, you might say, there for the Sejuani. Things are going a little bit uh, sideways, however, for Excel fans right now. Uh, that's kind of like two big skirmishes back to back, but it feels like Excel haven't been on the winning side. Also, the salt in the wound that you were correct, the Scuttle Crab was picked up by Shalka there. And so many uh, flashes expended. Mickey, in particular, not having access to his. I'll peek in and see what Mickey's maxing on this Orn. He's also going for the Q. Gets a little bit of extra poke in the lane. Oda Wamne's going to pop the World End, expect. Just about gets out. But you can see Oda Wamne will have total control of this lane. Expect has the cannon barrage, so can clear out the wave if it pushes in. And this is kind of best case scenario um, for Schalke, is not allowing Excel's composition, these laners, to just kind of neutralize or survive the lanes. Because we talked about how Excel don't just hard lose it, that they have the potential that they can survive here, but it is starting to get tipped relatively quickly. Mickey not having access to his flash means that he's going to have to be much more careful right now. And Odo now getting a lot of chunks out of Expect and really starting to punish him. And Lorax has been in the right position on this Sejuani early on. We wondered if he could neutralize the Karthus well. He's been doing a very good job of continually harassing Excel. There's another fight in the bottom lane. Zingax down to about half HP. Torrey continuing to trade. Mickey's dead to the Chaos Storm in mid. Mm, uh, Mickey's just losing. Just losing that fight now. Didn't have a defensive summoner, was running Ignite and Flash off the unsealed spellbook. And what felt like it was very calculated, very controlled initially. You have the, the split map and Vade comes in. It's like, okay, everyone just kind of play safely. We'll wait until we have ultimates and then we can team up and start making things happen. Everything's gotten sideways here as now we're going to find out what happened for Mickey. He eased forward to try and clear the wave and then just doesn't respect the damage that comes back from the Chaos Storm. Honestly, that was, that was once again a bit of a misplay for Mickey. We saw it in the top lane as he didn't hit the wall with his charge. And then we see it in the mid lane as he goes too deep trying to clear out that minion wave. Um, Kadril has found a small window here to try to uh, do the Drake. So playing around kind of the one lane that's not on fire for Excel right now, which would be Patrick and Tori because they're constantly having pressure forward down here. Uh, luckily for Excel, it is an Infernal, so that does feel pretty sweet. But now, what will Schalke get in response knowing that Kadril's on the bottom side of the map? No Rift Herald for them yet, that's 10 seconds away, but Lorox did go in and take the second bloom. Mickey is up towards the top lane here, just going to use that Scryer's bloom. It looks like Schalke are going to play towards the Rift Herald. All five members are now on the top side of the map, but are in mid, both the bot laner and the support have come across. Should be pretty easy to secure, but they will lose some pressure on that bot lane turret. I mean, you're going to feel super confident to do this because you're winning so hard onto the top side of the map. You look at uh, Gangplank's itemization right now. He's got like a coal, a crystal, and like a sword. It's, <laughs> it's not a very feels-good moment. So it's a super easy call for, for Schalke to do this and to continue, continue to accelerate the game. And because it is a champion like Karthus, yeah, Rakan and Zaya are getting a lot of free time for Excel onto that bottom side. But even if Karthus joined them, there's not a threat that you actually trade back a structure. So I think even though it's kind of plates down in the bottom for Excel, this is just a, a massive win for Shaka, who have so much tempo right now. See the uh, gold differences there in the mid lane. Abadage about 500 gold ahead. There's a 400 gold lead for Patrick in that bottom lane, but that's going to get chunked into as Inax will start to take some plates. Get at least one here, probably get two. And Inax will be able to even out that gold score. Schalke now a thousand gold ahead, going to be about a thousand three hundred by the time they take the second plate. So right now, if you're an Excel fan, you need Excel to kind of take a deep breath, reset the map. You now have key ultimates that you wanted uh, initially with the Orin ultimate, as well as um, Kadro's ultimate now available. You're looking to get priority into the mid lane, unlock Mickey, get him to a side lane, preferably around Patrick and Torre, and then play around, you know, maybe a, a Requiem uh, snipe or a, an Orin ultimate, or just make sure that Patrick and Torre, Torre continue to set up for success. On the side of Schalke, um, you kind of have your pick of the litter about where you want to start stacking your CC. And it looks like we're potentially going to try to catch out Zaya and Rakan. Lorox has snuck into the lane bush. There's a ward in that second one. Here we go, Patrick. Good feather storm, dodges out the winter's bite and should be able to get away. Alt, alt there. In terms of Lorox trading his for the feather storm from Patrick. Still really well done from Patrick. Um, is able to hold on to his flash right there. I feel like it's hard to go after the Orn because he is so tanky, but uh, he didn't have his flash. It's just about to come off of cooldown, so maybe you can say that Shalka didn't pick the right target that they yep. wanted to. Um, it's still never going to feel necessarily totally bad ganking for a Braum, but very hard to crack a Zaya with ult and flash um, versus the Orn without the flash. It's what I like to see if I'm a support, by the way. Toy was backing. 
Patrick eats the Winter's Bite so they can get the combined recall back. It's always the little, the little things that show the synergy between the two bot laners. Now Schalke may be looking down towards the bottom lane as Expect is in a 1v2 scenario for the moment. Good read, however, because Excel have their team members waiting in the wings. Gabriel comes in in time, Lorox is on his way down. Torre with the quickness is in the vicinity as well and Schalke disengage. And reminder, uh, Excel kind of went sideways into the lane phase, but in terms of if the game stays static like this, it feels much better for Excel. The charm into the knockup, into this brittle Brock, and Expect gets the kill with a cannon barrage. Really good read on the map. It was Torre and Kadro that were responding to the pressure point that Schalke were building in the bottom side of the map to gank Expect. They don't realize that Torre is unaccounted for. He sets up a pick into the mid lane, and Excel are kind of right back in control. They had lost it for a little while, but both hands are now firmly back on the wheel, and again, if the game just stays in this very calm cruise control, Excel's composition is the one that I favor to run away with this. So there is a bit more pressure on Schalke to get creative about how they're gonna crack this. I really like the layering of CC here. You see the call of the Forge God coming out. Torre gets the quickness in before Abadage can flash away, and then he's just knocked airborne for the entirety of his death. That was the, the bounce house, is yep. what I like to call that combo. Bouncy castle is what we call them in England. Because That's we right. have castles there. Your Americans don't have that many castles. Well, I don't think we have any castles. Well, you got White Castle. How the cool <laughs> That may be works. the most American thing. <laughs> Expect uh, it's now got a Sheen and a Phage in this bottom lane, still stacking up that cull. There's a 23 CS lead for Patrick with uh, all the swords he could get in his inventory. With the, with the Rift Herald being used in the top lane, this turret may fall. I think it's only going to be two plates that are taken. Yeah, um, Shaka don't really want to push their luck right now because Abadage has committed to pushing the mid lane and they know that Mickey has first access to rotation. So it's just going to be the charge from the Herald uh, without any sort of follow-up from Shaka's members. You can see where that CES and that experience is being funneled. Abadage and Odawamne, the only two players at level 10. Expect is almost there. Mickey has just picked over, but Patrick's actually a full level ahead of Inax, about a level and a quarter right now. So Patrick's going to be very powerful when we get to some of these mid-game fights. Yeah, and while Patrick is really powerful um, kind of right now and in towards the mid-game, it's Oda Wamne and Schalke's kind of top side of the map that they're leveraging this power point. The fact that Expect is still playing very cautious around the potential dive as Mickey makes a catch. Inax still has flash, still has heal. There comes the Requiem, that's not going to kill him. Or... The Call of the Forge God. Oh, dreams, that was very well done. Torre flashes forward, didn't have the Ignite, but Inax did use the heal. Some fancy footwork, really feeling himself right there, Torre, to uh, try to force that one. Meanwhile, it does mean that Schalke, again, continuing to win on the side that Oduwamne is on. They traded for the Drake, uh, and now will threaten Expect. Expect should have heads up this is here. He's got Cannon Barrage in about five seconds or so. Oduwamne's already popped the World Ender. Lorwax has the Glacial Prison, gonna use it. Expect will flash away. And you can see very clearly the size of the map the teams are playing around. We noticed it even from the first invade where they split the map. At Schalke's strong side is the top side, or Odo Omne. XL's strong side is Torre and Patrick, and that is who they are trying to funnel as much gold as possible into. But there is still kind of a, a timer uh, here as both ultimates are actually being used to clear the wave. Enax using his ultimate top lane to dissuade Patrick and Torre, while Expect are picture in picture there for the observers, using the Gangplank ultimate to mean that Odawamne can't just take that tower. And now Excel are actually really trying to punish Odawamne's extension here. Yeah, he went to try and proxy farm that second wave. Expect is on the way. Mickey doesn't no have ult. Call of the Forge God, so shouldn't they have to chase this one down? Kind of trying to distract Schalke from taking first turret of the game as well. Um, but it's a really good example of kind of the tools that Excel have on their composition to, again, neutralize a lot of the power that uh, Schalke have at this point in the game. The fact that you can use the Gangplank ultimate defensively like that um, to just absorb a lot of the time that Odawamne had spent down there onto that tower. And it is still a, a timed clock for Schalke. They still really need to break this game open to a lot more success, which uh, mid-game, you talked about it, is really strong for them, waiting for NX to make his back complete that Essence Reaver. Uh, Victor as a champion, because of his itemization, how cost-efficient it is, is really strong in mid-game, kind of on the completed or red hex core. So, there should be a window where you uh, take your Sejuani, and you look at Abadage, you say, hey mate, wanna hold hands? Let's go find someone to, to mess up. I mean, it, makes, it <laughs> would definitely work out for them. Abadage's had a pretty good performance so far this game, so they're gonna kill and about a 17 CS lead. The second Rift Herald has spawned, and both the teams will group up towards this top side. Looks like Patrick is going to get take the first turret of the game as Odawamne tries to push in, but the barrels will keep him at bay. And the first tower falls for XL.
Lorox giving up pressure on the Rift Herald here is going to come down towards the bottom side of the map. Lots of pings coming out from XL. They realize that the Sejuani is somewhere nearby, as I believe he walked over a ward next to that mid lane. It's kind of a rock between a, a, a rock and a hard place right now for Shalka, though, because they know that if they commit Sejuani towards the bottom side of the map, it's going to be the free second Rift Herald that Kadrul is just eyeing right now on the top side of the map. So Shalka need to be very quick and kind of um, very precise with what they want to trade here because there goes the herald it will go mid uh i think shaka actually just got outmaneuvered on the map like yeah. he didn't find expect you're not going to take that tower faster than this herald will expect actually saw lorox walk into the bush so played a lot safer the herald won't be used in the mid lane as the tower falls in the bottom there's still a thousand gold lead at the 16 minute mark here for shaka but as you say the clock is ticking piece by piece xl are scaling and the the gold leads Oduwame is a thousand gold ahead. He's still very powerful, but the lead in mid lane doesn't matter as much because Mickey will I, still have the call of the Forge God and can still upgrade items as the game goes it, on. It also just doesn't matter at all now that the Abyssal Mask is complete. Um, Yamato talked about this earlier, but one of the nice things about Orn mid is just how easily he can itemize virtually into every single matchup, yeah. especially when he's against traditional mages like the Victor. Having the Abyssal Mask, uh, and now he's got the Merc Treads on top of it, he's gonna have uh, some armor in his back pocket. He's he's unmovable. You, you can't do anything to him. Mickey would have to dramatically mess up and be hit for probably like 30 seconds to die. Uh, I doubt he's going to allow that to happen. Has had a couple of misplays this game, but uh, we'll see if Schalke get a lot of time with the tank to take him down. XL are playing around the bottom side. Mickey's going to try and defend here. The turret will fall pretty rapidly, but he's been able to clear out some of those minions. Tower goes down in mid. X, uh, Mickey finally hits level 12, and once again, it's Patrick who is being funneled the farm and funneled the gold for XL. Yeah, um, just trading power and XL biding their time, knowing that there's going to be a moment when they can just win the game. I do like the fact that Chalka made the call to uh, put the physical damage dealers across from Mickey to try to beat out the fact that he has the completed Abyssal Mask, but only pieces of armor. You can see that uh, NX is taking some pretty big chunks out of him, while Victor has now changed to lane assignments across from Gangplank, so... Schalke are trying to maneuver around the map to find their windows. It's very difficult to do, though, because XL have two globals. They have a long-range ultimate engage from Mickey as well. And it becomes very hard to actually maneuver around this when you never know if the Requiem's going to come down and just totally destroy you in lane. And it puts pressure on this Sejuani ultimate that needs to come out and really find a big team fight, a big victory for Schalke so they can uh, accelerate this game, get it back into their control. So all eyes right now on Sej. Uh, when she throws that ult, it has to count at this point. Well, we have the Black Cleaver complete on Odo Omne. Essence Reaver now on Inax. Upgraded Hex Core for Abadaga, but on XL, the scaling is starting to come through. Torrey's going to engage. There's the quickness as well on Abadaga. He catches up to Dreams. Call of the Forge God coming out. The bullet time really not doing too much. And Dreams is the first to fall. Odo is coming in, though, and they're looking for Mickey. The Chaos Storm slowly chipping away at his health. And in a pure 5v5, XL strike first. That said, Shalka still have the Sejuani ultimate, so they can feel confident to attempt to look for a re-engage here. But because of the Herald and the priority in mid lane, XL perfect to the basics. They say, don't move towards the Drake. Sejuani still has ultimate. Instead, force Shalka to respond to our pressure in the lane phase. Get this, then rotate towards Drake. I mean, Lorax could use the ult, but that's a second turret fallen already on this push. Patrick still has his uh, Feather Storm, so if they try to catch out the Zaya, who's probably the strongest member of XL right now, it'd be very tricky to do. And because Shalka realized they cannot take the fight, the Cloud Drake will go down. XL will have their second dragon of the game, and are now 1,300 gold ahead. Take another look at the team fight. We'll see what happens here. Um, so much damage actually goes down on Abadage without any of the backline really hitting him. Patrick initially throws out some feathers, but Inax's ultimate actually zones Patrick away from the fight where he just stands on the other side of the bullet time. But the Orn and the Karthus are doing so much damage by themselves that it didn't really matter. And we already talked about the fact that uh, Lorox held the ultimate, didn't find an opportunity that he liked to throw it with Sejuani, so... We said that that was a, a big key responsibility for Schalke because timer's on them. They needed to make a hard engage really matter to get a foot back into this game, and they didn't even bother to pull the trigger. Weren't able to find the connection that they were looking for. They do still have a few opportunities, but it is slowly slipping out of their grasp. Iceborne Gauntlet will be on its way for Mickey. Decided to upgrade that instead of going for a Sunfire Cape, which is sometimes what we see from the Orns. Uh, 
I think I would have preferred him just to be an outright tank. There's a lot of damage on his team. I'm not sure he needed to go Iceborne, but I, it's, it's Mickey. Just, it's just a Mickey thing. Yeah, just the Mickey thing. I mean, I, I guess the nice thing about having Iceborne Gauntlet is that if you go into that back line, um, which you don't necessarily need him as a tank to peel, you actually just need him in this type of composition to fly into the back line and yep. be as disruptive as possible. And so you can make the argument that, hey, if you went uh, Abyssal into Sunfire here, which is the traditional itemization for Orn, that you're technically tankier than going for the Iceborne. But because you have so much protection on Zaya that if you actually just fly into the back line and have the Iceborne Gauntlet, you could stick to your targets a lot more effectively. Do a bit more damage. What are they saying? Patrick's on fire, and I think they were saying Forgiven is terrified. Which is... That's, that, that hurts. That's, that cuts real deep, Shrek. That cuts real deep. <laughs> I'd like to request a new lower third for end game. I want the lyrics for the uh, different Deems chants. Oh, yeah, that's what we need. We need ex all of the chants like down along. at the bottom, and then you have the little sing-along popping along as we go through. I used to do that all the time with, like, Disney movies when I was a child, like the Jungle Book and such. You just sing along. It was great fun. Exile setting up around the ban as to be expected at this point of the game. And speaking of expect, he's down here in the bottom lane. He's starting to get up towards that second item, probably in a position now where he can trade with Odawamne or at least keep Odawamne at bay. Uh, and that's kind of the key thing. Um, level 13 is the big level for Gangplank because obviously the reach charge time on his barrels is two times as fast as it is uh, initially. So he can start doing some of those really fancy barrel combos. So level 13 is actually the big power point when Gangplank wants to group up with his team and be really devastating with barrels. Um, as opposed to just kind of using your ultimate cross map and just being a, a farm soak until this point. Uh, but there shouldn't be a time when Odo Wamne, like obviously if Odo gets a hold of him, it's still going to be scary for Expect. But at this point, Expect can choose if he actually wants to fight Odo or just walk away from him. Like what sort of barrel combos would you be looking to do as the Gangplank? I know you have a few that you recommended to me if I ever play Gangplank in solo queue. Uh, the nice thing is, is that again, because the, the charge timer before the barrels are ready to be procced is 0.5 seconds. You can actually do the three barrel combo at this point, uh, maximizing the range. Usually with the Gangplank, you want to hide your barrels as well as possible. Um, key thing though, is that with so much range on the barrels now being level 13, it means a lot more threat into team fights. It means that your potential to chase with barrels is a lot easier. So across the board, uh, Gangplank just has a lot more versatility of actually wandering over to his team and participating. Lorax and Torre fighting over Vision in the top lane. You guys at home, remember? You use your three barrel combo when you hit level 13 on the Gangplank. Excellent. Level 13 is when you want to group as yeah. Gangplank. <laughs> That's when you are the most powerful and expect degrees. He has hit level 14, so perhaps a level too late, but he had to push out Odawamne in that bottom lane, and now all of Excel are on the top side of the map. Here comes the quickness, they're looking for Abadage, and he's gone before he can even do anything. Now they go to Lorox underneath the turret, the cannon barrage coming out as Odawamne TP's in, but Excel still have the minions here, it can push in the way. And it feels like the Doomsday Clock has yeah. really started to chime for Shalka. They are feeling the pain here and kind of unsure about where they want to attack on the map, and frankly, uh, the pressure is on Sejuani. She just needs to be a bit more confident about where they're creating their opportunities, about creating their numbers advantages for going into plays, because if they keep playing to Excel's timeline, they just get blown up. Yeah, bit by bit we see the ornaments coming in. We're having another look at this fight, because Abadage, he's under turret. You feel you're pretty safe in this situation. He's under turret and completely airborne for the entire time <laughs> through a duration of a gameplay ultimate. There's the power of the quickness, the call of the Forge God, and the cannon barrage. Requiem wasn't even used in that fight. I haven't actually seen Kadril really have too much of an impact in this game. How many times has he pressed R? Once, I believe. In a 24-minute game? Yeah. But you know what you don't need to do? Press R? All the time if you don't want to. If you only want three kills at 24 minutes, don't press R as cards. And we have just got confirmation. Kadril has only had to press R one time this game so far. That's working out for XL. Perhaps against a team of a slightly higher caliber, they would have been pushed a little bit further. But this game, they are 3,000 gold ahead. They have their third dragon of the game. And now, you know what's even better for them? That R is off cooldown even more often for us. Cloud Drake is so good for Orn Karthus uh, combinations. And Torre. This is, and Expect. Uh, it's so good for their entire team. I feel like Orn's the perfect champion for a player like Mickey because he's so, like, I'm going to call it beast mode. Oh. Talibor's coming in behind them here. Expect trying to catch out Abadage, but perhaps didn't realize that Lorox was waiting in the wings. Expects eats the oranges a little bit early, but it manages to flash across the wall. A lot used there to keep Expect safe. 
his flash, his TP, his cannon barrage, the call of the forge god all popped. But the glacial prism was used by Lorax alongside the chaos storm from Abadaga. So the big cooldowns obviously still left available is going to be NX um, with the bullet time, which is why I think that Excel aren't pushing their luck looking for this uh, this Baron here. So for a small brief window due to these cooldowns, um, Shalker are going to feel confident. You know how brief that window is? We've already had over half Mickey's ult cooldown gone. He's going to be back up in about 20 seconds or so. Basically, Curse you, no Cloud Drake. At all. That's what Schalke are thinking. Won their last two games in a row after bringing in Inax, who uh, they lost their first and then they won the next two. But uh, XL proving like mightier foes than G2 did last week. I mean, at this point in the game, at least when G2 were playing Karthus, we were like, ah, unfortunately the game's now over, Karthus is going to hit so hard. But technically, Gadriel actually won't hit that hard right now. Yeah. Um, he's got the, his Oblivion Orb and now his Needlessly nar uh, Large Rod. He only has the uh, jungle item complete, uh, the Runic Echo, so... He's also only got three stacks on his Dark Harvest. He uh, he actually won't he won't hurt that bad. So team yeah. fights aren't actually at, as out of control for Shalka as you could normally feel at this point in the game when a Karthus is there. So I, I still feel like Shalka have a chance here. There's still time. It definitely is. The clock is ticking still. We have uh, the Molten Edge complete on Patrick, the Trinity Fusion on Expect. Those Orn upgrades starting to rattle on through and each of them, you know, about 1,000 to 1,500 gold worth of stats. Torrey's going to step on a ward here and dodge away from the Winter's Bite. Excel continue to play up towards this top side. It's actually Mickey who's answering Odo Omne down towards the bottom. They won't expect there because he hasn't got his teleport. And Mickey, with the unsealed spellbook, does have one of his own. Oh, yes. And back to my point about Mickey and going beast mode on Orn. Because Mickey likes to play so aggressive and so forward. Oh, am I going to get time to talk about it? Yes. Orn is a perfect champion to kind of band-aid how aggressive Mickey is because he's impossible to kill. Mickey can do whatever he wants. He can go wherever he wants. And Orn will just walk away. You know who else he could play? Mundo. Yep, goes where he pleases. That was an easy joke. Thank you. Synergy, Frost. Synergy. <laughs> Set you up for it as Kajo sets himself up for a bit of disappointment as he has to flash away. The Glacial Fisher in the Glacial Prison not getting the Glacial Synergy they wanted, but... It does mean that Kedro no longer has his flash. Toy is going to step forward here. There's a blast cone for him. And Rakan very slippery anyway, so it'd be quite difficult to keep him under lock and key. How frisky are you feeling, Excel? Super frisky, I hope. I mean, at some point, they're actually going to have enough damage that if uh, if Shalka lose vision control over this, they can effectively kind of two-man or, or yeah. three-man this Baron. I mean, Orn plus anyone could probably two-man it. Maybe I also just think, Rakan. like, Karthus's damage repeatedly. Yeah. Karthus does do a huge amount of damage to single objectives if they're standing by themselves. Of course, the layways do more. And it's about still that 2,500, 3,000 gold lead for XL, but the tempo of the game, I was going to say it's slowed down, but it's been pretty glacial pace throughout the entirety of it. We've had five kills in 30 minutes. Later on today, we'll see perhaps a game with more action as Origin and Fnatic face off in the game of the week. But inaction doesn't mean these teams that the, the XL have played this incorrectly. I want to put that out there. XL have played exactly to their win conditions. Steady, slow, scaling up, uh, where Schalke just haven't found the opportunities they would have wanted. There was there was a, a bit of off-roading in the early game for yes, XL, yes. but we have gotten back on the track if you're an XL fan, whereas um, Schalke, it's not for lack of trying. They have seen their windows and they've tried to take their shot, unfortunately. Uh, the execution has been has been lacking. There's been some indecision. Um, it's still a lot better than we were seeing from Shalka in previous weeks, trying to find that uh, proactivity. As here we go, uh, you had the buys now coming from Patrick. He was missing one of his attack speed items, but you can already see now that he has kind of the three core itemization on Zaya, as well as that Molten Edge that you were talking about, the upgraded Infinity Edge. Uh, Excel are now feeling very confident that time is up. Our composition feels very powerful right now, so let's go for it. XL also have the option of trading the Cloud Drake if they wanted to for the Baron. Mickey is going to get locked up in place here. It's going to take them a long time to kill him. He, he flashes can go the Infernal chase. wherever he, can he wants. He can go. <laughs> Call of the Forge God was blocked by the Unbreakable. Unkillable. And with Kadril coming in with the Wall of Pain, we'll see if XL want any more of this action. They want to fight over the Cloud Drake. Expect takes a death rate to the back. And it's chunked out just a little. He's used the Remove Scurvy to eat up and heal himself up. Schalke gonna start this one up. XL, they don't have to fight for this, but they might still want to. Kato is pushing out the mid lane. The Cloud Drake is about to fall. Torre doesn't engage. Dreams with the Glacier Fisher hits three. There's the bullet time as well. The heal comes out from Patrick to keep 
Everyone topped up. That was well played by Schalke. They get the cloud. Uh, that was a situation, however, the Excel probably could have played it better if they just wanted to concede the Dragon. Right now, they're trying to use pro or better positioning on the map to get first access to this Baron and just try to burn it as quickly as possible. Now, Shaka should absolutely know that this is happening. They uh, before they get there. But yeah, it's a little bit too little too late. It's all on Lorx. He has to get in, but the quickness stops him. Torre dies for it, but he was able to keep the jungler away. Excel get the Baron. Odo one there going in with the world ender. They're gonna try and chase Excel as much as they can. They don't want anyone getting out alive. Cajal went to the wrong position and he's dead as well. The blast cone blasted him back to death. Now Mickey may be caught out. He's out. Expect gets out. Mickey has been caught out down towards the bottom side and he is gonna fall. In the end, they shall prison you, so make sure they get it. Two barons survive for Excel. One on Patrick, one on Expect. And Schalke were able to find a few consolation kills the nice thing about having it on your top laner as well as your adc is it means that it's still very easy to spread the baron buff into multiple lanes um you can send expect out into a side lane and then group around your adc so that's at least a silver lining here is shaka recognize that as soon as we reset on this map the baron's going to neutralize anything else that we want to do and we're probably gonna have to play on the defensive again so let's go full aggressive right now see what we can yep. eke out of this map while we do have power We'll have another look at that Baron fight. Torre does such a good job of keeping Lorox out of the pit. Yeah, uh, Torre in tandem with the uh, the Orn horn there. And then at this point, it's kind of like every man for themselves for Excel. They're like, we are not fighting this. We are using the Baron empowered recall as much as possible as Cadrill, unfortunately, on the wrong side of that. Uh... Yeah, got Blast Cone a little bit in the wrong direction. Old Women is going to catch Torre here, but the grand entrance can just dodge him away. And now we'll see what Excel can do with the Baron, because at the moment, it's a negative power play. Minus 372 gold. It keeps changing every second, so I'm not sure why I said the exact number. Uh, but that you hope with the next minute or so, they can split up the map that little bit. Bring Expect into the top lane, bring the rest of Excel down towards the bottom lane, and try and chip away at these towers. Still always feels like a situation that even if they're not being uh, aggressive with this Baron, that the longer the game goes on, it, it's yeah. still just okay for Excel. So they don't necessarily have to feel a lot of pressure or um, responsibility to really make this Baron count as uh, as opposed to if it was Schalke with the Baron. I'm trying to remember if Karthus altered in that last fight. I'm not sure if he did as the tower is the target here for Patrick and for Torre. He goes in with the quickness. Here's the corner of the Porsche Guard as well. Will be blocked by Dreams. Abadaga has already killed Torre and the teleport's coming in. Excel very greedy going for that turret and now Expect is caught out. That's another Baron buff that's gonna fall. He pops the stopwatch, but Odo Omni is sitting straight on his body as he comes out. The Requiem is used. It's gonna get cancelled by Odo Omni! Cadrill! I didn't mean use it like that! And here comes the fight. Shalka diving in. Guardian Angel propped on Odo, but Mickey is in that front line. Patrick flashing forward, trying to get on Abadage, but now he's been exhausted. And Patrick, Inex gets the kill. Patrick, the concussor blows a proc in. Cadrill manages to get one. Hits the layways. Patrick takes out Abadage as well. Well, will they keep the fight up? Inex trying to trade across the wall. It's a one for one. A grand and a grand traded across. Lorox jumps onto Cadrill. Cadrill dodging for his life. Almost hits the final skitter that would have caused the demise of dreams. Oh, Cadrill. Does he get out? No, he doesn't. Hit the skittle, Cadrill. Puts up the wall of pain, but Lorox, of course, can't be slowed. That's the passive. And there's the kill. All of Excel for Lorox and Dream survive. But Excel didn't need to force that as hard as they did. It was them who initiated the dive, and Torre dies at the very beginning of the fight as we take another look at that one. You could have actually just sat on the tower and taken the structure for free, but Excel overreached. Torre then instantly dies. Um, the Chaos Storm zones away the rest of Excel, and then it's every man for them, uh, themselves. The fact that Expect gets a pretty horrendous teleport positioning uh, doesn't really get to contribute much into that fight. And then the hero play from Odo Omne finds Kadril, interrupts the Karthus ultimate, and frankly, it's Patrick at the very back of this fight just going absolutely beast this mode. This forward, dearie me. To try to really save this, because this was almost absolute disaster for Schalke, or excuse me, for Excel. Still just not great. Not great. Not great at all, especially with the advantage they're in. You can see Patrick has a two-level lead over Inax, but ends up being a one-for-one one in that trade. Of course, Patrick had already killed Abadaga. I feel like we're starting to notice a trend with Excel where um, it's kind of like 
If everything goes according to plan, their macro is actually pretty crisp and clean, which is why we consider them in the top of the table of our LEC teams. But they still don't quite have the same synergy or capabilities as our upper echelon teams when it comes to executing in team fights. Both teams at set point on the Cloud Drakes now, two apiece. An Infernal for XL, an Ocean for Schalke. Expect is chasing Lorox out here. Torre and Mickey will have the flank. Torre has the quickness, doesn't have the flash, and they decide not to go for it. I was thinking back to that fight, I'm pretty sure Torre used his Q to pop the Banshees on Abadaga and was like, okay, we have to go, we have to go, we can catch him. But then just there was no follow-up. There was no ability to get the call of the Forge God in because Dreams was there with the wall. Expecting a big four across here. In goes Torre. Once again, the wall blocks the call of the Forge God. Stun's gonna land onto Patrick, and the follow-up is not there for XL. Looks like they'll take the turret. Patrick just needs one more auto. Uh, a few more autos now that the minions have died. But Mickey can tank this one up, and that tower will fall. Fifth of the game for XL. Still only a two and a half thousand gold lead. I want to say the XL fans have been pretty quiet for a while. Oh, no, they haven't. <laughs> uh, XL just brute forcing that tower down. It's not going to be the Baron set up here in 20 seconds, so we'll see if they slow it down, play this one a bit more to the book, not get so overzealous with some of these engagements, because I agree with you. It feels like Torai see hero, Torai kill hero. He's going for Abadage every single time. Um, and credit to Dreams, he's doing a lot to deny a lot of the incoming damage. Um, denied, I think, the two back-to-back -back Orn yep. ultimates, I believe, in those fights. He's doing a very good job. Let's have a look where we are in terms of summoners as well. Inax, no flash, no flash on Patrick, but he does have the ult. Uh, across the board, actually, only only one flash up in the entire game. It's Mickey. So we'll see if this Baron is a key fighting point. That means a bunch of flashes down. It is now Sejuani and Victor's time to shine. You know what I love, Fosk? It's not a single stopwatch. Not one. It is Victor and Sejuani's time to shine. I'm loving it. Glacial Prison misses on Mickey, but he's straight into the gravity field. Has to flash, no flashes left in the game. Here comes the chase, they're healing, they're looking for Mickey. There's a last whisper complete. On Inax, the uh, mortal reminder. Patrick gets the top lane tower as Torre is chased out, but is Patrick a little bit overextended here? Still has the heal? I feel like Patrick is playing a game where he's like, guys, come on, just stop. This is like, oh. so look here, he's like, please take the tower, stop fighting. It's actually a Lord Dominic's regards on, uh, on Inax, sorry. In the speed of the team fight, I missed a mix. No, oh, I'm messing up my words. <laughs> I messed up Are my words. Are you items. okay? I hope so, Fosk. I hope so. Uh, 3,000 gold lead for XL, as we say. Patrick taking the top lane turret means that they have a little bit more pressure in that top side, but we've got two and a half minutes on the set, the sole point for both these teams in terms of Cloud Drakes. We've got no time at all on the Baron. XL have a couple of wards just sneaking into the jungle of Schalke. And we'll see if Schalke decide to take the fight. So let's talk about uh, team fight uh, execution and kind of like what viewers should be looking for. As I say that though, Torre, he's okay. Walk it off. Um, if it's a very fast team fight and you kind of get blown up initially, it's probably safe to say that it was good for, for Shalka. Um, you press your ultimates all together, you do massive damage on top of your Sejuani ultimate, you hit your key targets, and then that's going to look good for Shalka. The longer the fight goes on, the higher the likelihood is that Excel will win it just because of their overtime sustained damage. Uh, of course, flanks are going to be incredibly important for Shalka to make sure that they can get into that back line find someone like a Cadrill, blow him up instantly, because uh, he's going to be a big contributor to a lot of this damage with repeated Skittle use. Flash is back up across the board, only Torre lacking it now. Uh, Mickey, of course, is running Teleport Exhaust, because he has to cycle through the spells with the unsealed spell, but Patrick's starting to open up on Lorax. Torre, Torre looking for the engage, has the quickness, has the grand entrance, but won't go forward. It looks like Expect is going down towards the bottom lane to push out that wave. The Shaka have all backed off in mid now, Excel will take their time in the river, try and clear out as much vision as they can, but need to be careful they don't overstep because at the moment, that topside river is under Schalke's control. Yeah, uh, there's no room for mistakes right now. There's two big and important objectives that are coming up. Obviously, the Baron's still alive that you're talking about, as well as that Soul Point Drake coming up. So uh, people are looking for it, maybe feeling themselves as teams are being pretty aggressive to get positioning and get waves pushing on their map, but one wrong mistake uh, could spell disaster. Oh, do I make catching the cannons of that wave means that the wave will slowly push out towards 
the XL side. Lorax does have a flank position off here, but he's on a ward. Doesn't have the Oracle's alteration available, so won't be able to clear it out. Do they know? Does he know? He's going in for Mickey. Mickey lands the knockup. There's the gravity field. Bullet time coming out as well, and Mickey's down to half HP. Here comes Odo from the bottom side. Torre going in with the quickness. He gets the charm off only onto Odo. Glacial Prism hits on Torre, but so far no one's dying. Dreams once again blocks up the core of the Forge God. Lorax is looking for the scuttle crab, but Kadrill will get it. But it's what we talked about now that all of the key ultimates are down for Shalka. They didn't blow someone up. The team fight would be won by Excel. Here comes the TP. They're refreshed. Mickey is back into the fight, and there is the sole point for Excel. They played the team fight very slowly, absorbed all of the cooldowns from Shalka, and just walked through them and now have positioning on the Baron. Excel get the soul with it. They get all that extra movement speed, especially after their ultimates, and we'll see now. Old starting to come back for Abadage. He's got the Chaos Storm, but this Baron is going to be so low. Kadrel has the Requiem. He's got no smite. Lorox has a smite of his own. Could jump in. The smite about to come off cooldown from Kadrel, but they need a ward in the pit. Torre is trying to act as a bodyguard. That is about to have someone just to distract here as the Baron goes down to 2,000 HP. Lorox goes in, but it's secured by Kadrel. He wins the smite fight. And now Lorox is done for. Dreams once again blocks the call of the Forge God, but Shao can need more than this. They need more than this. They need a few kills if they're going to get anything out of this. They lose the Baron. They lose the soul point. Uh, they lose the dragon. And now, Excel. They have bided their time. They have waited and waited. And by God, we have all waited this game. But finally, with a Baron and a Cloud Soul, you have to feel Excel can now push in to look to break Schalke's base. And these types of compositions are just inevitabilities here for Excel as we take another look at it. Uh, level 17 to level 15. How close were the smites? Miles away. <laughs> Miles away. Smites at about like 1,700 or so. Kato secures it. Mickey did have smite as well, so it would have been a double for Excel, but he didn't use it in the fight. And now we'll see Excel pushing in. Kadrel has used ultimate twice this game. Just want to remind everyone of that. Once was cancelled. The other one was very early on. Okay, so the Carthus wasn't why they won. The no, that's but fine. he did get the smite off, and that's important. I think Patrick has been having a MVP performance uh, yeah. right now. I mean, we mentioned it in Pick and Ban. They are two of the stars on Excel so far. This split, Glacial Prism going to hit. Abadagi almost takes out Kadrul. And the bullet time comes out as Patrick dodges with the Feather Storm. Oh, what? That wasn't meant to happen. The gravity field's gonna come out. Expect we'll use the flash. Torre going in with the quickness. Cannon Barrage comes out with the double charm. Really not gonna do too much. Torre able to dodge away. Saves his top laner. Will Mickey escape? He that was will. Around the world there from Torre. Uh, that said, it does delay a lot of the uh, pushing power yeah. there from Excel. They were in position. They were trying to take towers. But again, Excel kind of out of position, forcing a fight a, a bit too overzealous. They have to use a lot of their cooldowns defensively, and it buys Shalka more time. Abadage and Lorax teaming up to do a hell of a lot of damage here. After Kadrill got caught and got out, I was pretty sure this was all hunky-dory, but Expect just gets chased down. And this is what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for that Sejuani ultimate to find a key target that isn't someone tanky like Orn, because you can see that when it connects with oh. someone, it does so much damage, but... We do have to celebrate uh, Torre there, flashy footwork on the Recon. Didn't even use his flash. That is, that was... Mwah. It was that around was the beautiful. world, it was, it was in, out, and yeah, That was me, I was <laughs> going back side. for seconds right there, for us. That was delicious to watch. Great stuff from Torre. He's like, I'm clipping it out, this is the highlight. <laughs> Someone grab a clip of that, put that on Reddit. It is now XL in the bottom lane, looking to push in. Abadage is there to act as a bouncer. The Banshees comes down as the call of the Forge God, and that's not going to connect as Dreams blocks it. Torre dodges out. Tower has fallen. Mickey tanking up all the damage, and here it comes! Third of the game, and finally he finds his mark! Bullet time coming out as Odawami tries to step forward, but Patrick is so safe. Patrick is so secure in this team. Inax Abadage and Odawami trying to do what they can. The death rate comes out as the inhibitor has already fallen. Patrick, we're... Oh my god! Cajal almost falls. He's able to get out alive. Inax looking for the double of the teleport behind them. Patrick Here flashes. comes Odo. Here comes Odo. Here comes the chase. Odo, no flash, no world ender. Can he get there in time? Because remember, they have the movement speed. They've got the dragon soul, the cloud soul, making them run like the clappers down here towards the bottom lane. Odo Omne still looking for that flank. Abadage coming in with that siphon power trying to get the movement speed he can. With the call of the Forge God, it's back up. And it will hit onto Inax Torre. Jumps forward, jumps back, and disengages for XL.
good heads up awareness from Excel to stay together, to disengage. Still, <laughs> I think this kind of like tells the story of the game. Half of Excel is diving the tower, doing ridiculous damage, and Patrick's just mowing down the tower, takes it, and then turns to the team fight. And maybe it's a situation where you can say, uh, Tore and Mickey are just keeping all of Shalka airborne, that it gives Patrick the time that he can take that tower, but feels like there's a little bit of <laughs> little bit of synergy issues. I, I agree with you. I think these fights have not been that damage is so gross. <laughs> Do me. I would argue he's almost fully built. He's sitting on a blasting wand. I hope to see a void star from him. Just the magic resist of Mickey would be very good to shred through. Maybe Aleandre's as well, actually. We'll see. He knows his uh, Victor builds better than I know his builds, so we'll see where he decides to go with that final item. We are approaching the end game, by the way, Frost. Second longest game of the split at 45-40. Slow and steady. If it lasts exactly, and I'm slowing down my words to make sure it's exactly, exactly five minutes more from now, it will be the longest game of the split. Okay, we have our goal. We've I mean, now created a new mini game. There's 30 seconds on the Elder Dragon, so I'm kind of hoping that decides it. Because if you can't win with an Elder Drake, doing something wrong usually as a team. Okay, so what do we need? We need this Sejuani to hit one of those key targets, either Patrick, he does have ultimate, doesn't have flash. And then we need follow-up damage, preferably from Abadage, to just immediately delete someone. And Patrick's also running the Mercurial Scimitar, so it's quite hard to lock him down. Patrick's going to step forward for Lorox. Kadrel. Down to about two thirds of his HP. Hits it on Patrick, but immediately QSS straight out of there. Torre trying to get him from the side. The Blade Caller does not fall back in the right place. Lorax getting chunked out just a little bit. The bullet time really doesn't connect on too much. The cannon barrage was used, and it feels like a whole lot of nothing so far. Mickey jumping forward. Stunned up with the concussive blows. I would argue he's going to try and put some damage back down onto him, but they don't really get enough. And now with Super Minions pushing in, do Shauka back. Do Shauka defend or do they push in? Looks like they're going for it. Torre! He's dead! Okay, 5v4 now for Shauka. They're looking for him as Patrick. And just in trouble. She has no way out of this. He has to do something absolutely miraculous, but can he do it? He's getting a lot of damage down. Here comes the Call of Forge God. Dream's looking to pocket up, but can't do it. Patrick's still alive. Patrick's still alive! Patrick is still alive! And with the Requiem coming out, Patrick's still surviving on the back line. Omni trying to get the damage down on him and gets it in the end. The Elder Dragon goes down to four members of Shauka, but expect it in the base cross. Expect does it. The Elder Dragon does doesn't enhance your recalls, the Elder Dragon doesn't get you back any faster, and expect swipe, swipe, swipe away the base of Shalka. And they'll take it. Ah, uh, not the game that you thought it was gonna end like that. I have to say it though. Patrick is so good. Oh, he was so good in that fight. Not even just the fight. He has QSS. And I, I guarantee in comms, he's walking towards Sejuani and he's like, it's fine, I have QSS. And he gets the Sejuani ultimate to trade for the QSS. And then it immediately turns into, like, of course, then after the team fight, plants his feet and it's just like throwing out the feathers, doing so much damage. But that was so well played from Patrick. Really good stuff all around from XL. They'll be happy to have broken their two game losing streak. Of course, they played up against Origin and G2, so teams right at the top of the table. And now they are on as even, five and five, just past the halfway mark of the split. Schalke, the miracle run perhaps has been stymied at the first hurdle. No, I actually think there's good things to take away from Schalke here. Um, I think there was execution flaws, like they kept throwing out, uh, fishing for those ultimates, trying to set up these plays, but it just wasn't connecting on the targets that they wanted to. And you saw every time they were able to follow up uh, a CC chain with Abadage's damage, it looked really great. Odo was having another great game. So yeah, it's still gonna feel bad that Shalka didn't find another win here, but this team looks so much better in this current iteration. So it's gonna be like a bittersweet thing, but I think that Shalka fans can rest easy at night thinking like, uh, at least my team's better than they were. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. the glass half full. It's a transformation for the team. And in this game, we had some players who really transformed the looks of Summoner's Rift. The key player of the game vote is at LEC on Twitter. Expect Patrick and Torre are your options. So make sure you get out there and vote. We're getting uh, Expect's reaction. Yep. And we're giving it to Torre. That is, he played with Khan, played it well. He did that really